Welcome to yet another episode of the Roots of Africa program. In today's episode, we are going to talk about how prepared Kenya is for business and trade. In today's episode, we are going to have our Honorable Ramadan Bungale and Madam Agnes Mwagwabi, who is also our country ambassador. Welcome and enjoy the show. Welcome at Adere Safari Lodge in the vast savanna of Kedepo Valley National Park, Uganda. We provide you with exotic ambience of beautiful cottages, rooms and swimming pools at affordable rates. We also offer memorable and restful transformation safaris and a tour to Karamoja. Adere Safari Lodge, everything right where you need it. We love having you here. For more information, contact our telephone number below. Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Roots of Africa program. In the studio today, we have our very own Honorable Minister Ramadan Bungane and Madam Agnes Mwagwabi. Honorable Ramadan Bungale is in charge of social services and talent management, in charge of youth, sports, women. Thank you very much Honorable Bungale for being with us and please uh, talk more about yourself. But before being on the sports, he was in charge of trade. For the last five years, he's been doing trade. So probably he will tell us more about how he landed into the trade. Thank you very much. And uh, my name is Ramadan Masud Bungale. I'm the minister in charge of social services and talent management in the county government of Kuale. And previously, I was the chief officer in charge of uh, trade and enterprise development in the county government and uh, how I landed there is that uh, I did uh, a master's degree in uh, business administration, strategic management and that basically it's a business related course and that's how I found myself as a chief officer in the department of trade and uh, then five years later I was promoted to be the minister now of social services and talent management. Social services because uh, I'm so much into sports, I'm so much into culture, I'm so much into women issues, I'm so much into uh, trying to make sure that the community is aware about what the government uh, does. Uh, back in trade, uh, we were dealing with uh, enterprise development, dealing with cooperatives, dealing with uh, businesses as a whole, business at uh, the county level and of course uh, uh, intertwining it with what is happening in the country together and linking of course what the government does together with policies and uh, laws that are governing business in the whole uh, country. Of course not forgetting trade shows and exhibitions that used to be part of uh, enterprise development and uh, business and we used to travel so much uh, to different countries. I also handled investment at some point in time and uh, I was able to, to, to know what happens on investment uh, issues in the country. Of course, the laws, the offices, uh, the linkage between chambers and the business that happens locally, for us to be able to attract investment into the county then, but at the same time now be able to uh, sell Kenya to other countries, especially when we had opportunity to travel to Tanzania, to Rwanda, to South Africa at some point for issues business. Wow, thank you very much. As you all know, IDOAS, we have our very own convention that will happen in Ghana, October from 27th to 31st of October. And Kenya is preparing itself. We are preparing to take our delegation there. So here we are, this is the first team, and we are telling the whole world, we are telling all the IDOAS that we are ready. And with me as well is uh, Madame, Agnes Mwagwabi. Agnes Mwagwabi is our very own country ambassador. She's the newly appointed, congratulations. And not only is she an ambassador, she also does PR. At the same time, she's also a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, 
and also deals a lot with agribusiness. Welcome, Madam Agnes. Uh, my name is Agnes Mogwabi, Public Relations Officer at the Mombasa County Assembly. I am also a council member at the Agricultural Society of Kenya, a life governor. I've been a member of the Agricultural Society of Kenya for the last 27 years. Formerly, I was uh, in charge of public relations at the Municipal Council of Mombasa for the last 30 years. I am also a farmer, a small-scale farmer. I love farming. That's why I'm into agribusiness. Wow. You have a lot in your hands. What exactly do you deal in farming? What I actually do beekeeping. I sell honey, branded honey. I do vegetables. I also do fruits like watermelon, oranges, mangoes and purples. Wow. That is quite a lot to be done. So as we've all heard that we are ready for business, we have agriculture, we have minister in charge of trade, and uh, we are ready to start our business. So, uh, Moshimiwa, probably maybe I can ask you, uh, how, how do you see Kenya in the next uh, few years when it comes to trading with other countries, especially now that we are planning to be doing a lot of trades? I think Kenya is, is ready for investment, and it has been ready for investment for a very long time. And uh, want to thank the government for preparing the enabling environment for business to thrive because uh, for a country to be ready for investment first uh, the labor force has to be top notch and you see I think in East Africa Kenya is uh, having a very skilled uh, labor force both uh, the uh, physical skills and of course the online uh, skills that is, has been exhibited in Kenya. Kenya is also very well infrastructure wise. Uh, the infrastructure level in the country is um, well developed. Uh, the financial infrastructure also is very good because uh, for people to come and invest, they also need to have a market that is ready as far as money is concerned. And we find that Kenya is also very ready for that. The IT infrastructure also in the country is also very, very well established. And of course, the natural resources that are found in the country are very, very vast. So combining all that, that tells you that the country is ready for investment and uh, every other person thinking about investing. And of course, uh, the hospitality that is there in the country with its people and stuff like that, you would uh, find maximum benefit when somebody comes to invest. Of course, they are the, the, the traditional, uh, traditional uh, thematic areas of investment and of course there are those that are coming up now you've heard about oil being discovered in most parts of the country you've heard about uh, minerals being discovered uh, in most parts of the country of course uh, not forgetting Kwale where we have various minerals that are, are, are have been discovered and uh, when you go to northeastern and the other side of uh, in Seoul and all those areas well, people have discovered oil there and it's a trend that is even people are searching whether the coast can be able to host that. Tourism is also there. It's traditional, yes, but uh, there are things that can be done as far as investment is concerned and we expect uh, somebody to get returns out of that. Uh, there is something called eye medicine. Eye medicine is something that has really come up and uh, investors can be able to get to that so that, you know, during COVID, it was very evident that uh, people cannot visit hospitals, but they can get consultations are, are from their homes. So such soft businesses and of course the traditional ones can also be invested in. Of course, I know she's going to talk so much about uh, agribusiness. But for me, I would vote for that thinking, but taking it to medium and small enterprises in the country. Because if you look at uh, our uh, incomes. Mostly the SMEs uh, contribute so much to the GDP, of course uh, the, the first one before we go to tourism. So investment of small businesses would uh, really, really uh, help the common monanchi reap so much out of the resources. Okay, now uh, 
probably not, what would we tell investors or somebody who wants to come and invest in Kenya, which are mostly apart from because we know Kenya is vast for the culture, especially mm. coffee, tea. Mm. We have uh, we have flowers mm. that we we know that out of every three roses in the world, <laughs> one comes from comes Kenya. From Kenya. Yeah, yes, exactly. yeah. so. <laughs> One thing, one thing is, uh, we should not run away from our, our, our. I would say our core items that uh, we are known for as a country. We cannot run away from coffee, from tea. That we would start with those because that has given a lot of mileage to the country. But at the same time, we also need to diversify. We want people to come and invest in manufacturing now because if you look at uh, what we get out of coffee and tea and agricultural products. It's, it's not equivalent to what other countries are exporting. And that's why you find that we cannot compete uh, with other countries in terms of the exchange value with the dollar because uh, we are mostly agricultural. And you see agriculture does not fetch so much money to the country. But now in line with um, the Agenda 4 where manufacturing is, uh, is, is one of them, I would urge that people should come into manufacture. Because the resources that I've talk, talked about, the natural resources, is that most of the, the, the areas in the coast and of course in, in some areas, we find that there's a lot of uh, limestone that people can come do uh, cement manufacturing. Yeah, because guys have come to do it, but then it is not exhaustive. Still, the potential is there. And you know, when we export cement, you end up getting so much than when you export uh, tea and, uh, and coffee. Uh, people can also do mining, whatever is happening now in the country as far as mining is concerned. When we uh, st start sending or uh, adding value to what we manufacture or what we mine in the country, apart from creating jobs, we also get so much value. I'm thinking guys can also come to do uh, mining in the country, but then the mining that is, is the, the, I would urge they come do should not be that the raw material is exported to other countries for, for manufacturing of end products. The manufacturing should be done in Kenya so that it gets employment. At the same time, there is the transfer of skills. There is also investment in um, uh, construction and construction materials. Today, the thinking of Kenyans is not to rent houses. Most of them. Most of them think of uh, they want to build their own houses. For them to do that, they need cheap materials yeah those cheap materials can be uh, availed here or they can be gotten here by companies coming or individuals coming to invest in building materials i know there are guys very young who are doing uh, uh, manufacturing of mabati competing with the mabati rolling mills in in their own small way but they're doing good so when investors come in that particular angle they will be able to uh, have the su supply being high of the materials and then the customers will enjoy now that uh, the price will have a little bit gone down. So they can come and invest in manufacturing, that is a very big opportunity. Wow, thank you very much. As you've heard, uh, we have a lot in Kenya, we are still more. There's still more to come from Honorable Bungale and as well as Madam Agnes Mogwabi. Let's take a short break and when we come back we'll know more about what Kenya has in store for the whole world. Thank you very much and continue enjoying the show. Thank you. Welcome to yet another episode of Learn Swahili via Movies. There are three words that we're going to be focusing on. Muda, which is time. Mungu, which is God, and Mapema, which is early or early earth. Because we both don't belong to this world. You are just like me, Benjamin. Your heart is just like mine. I don't know Okay, fine. I'll marry you. Now let them be free. I'm serious about you. I want to marry you. Someone is going to die. Who could put you in one of the two? I'm more so on a good of Gosa. You could listen. Give him a minimum of Mongapi Katamasha. Mongapi!
Welcome back to the Roots of Africa program. As Alia said in the studio, we have Honorable Ramadan Bungani and we also have Madam Agnes Mogwabi with us. We have learned more about trade in Kenya and what Kenya has to offer to the rest of the world. Well, we'd also like to know more about agribusiness from Agnes Mogwabi, what she does and what she thinks about what to invest more on the agribusiness. Madam, mm -hmm. welcome. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, in Kenya, we have uh, lots of land, which uh, idle land, which needs to be used. So there are so many opportunities in agriculture. Basically, in Kenya, we have lots of opportunity in agriculture. For instance, I'll talk about a uh, uh, farmer's choice in Kenya. They don't have enough supply simply because the farmers in Kenya are not able to supply the kind of uh, produce that they need, that's poultry and pigs. So we have huge, huge market in poultry and uh, pigs. Uh, another issue is uh, we have real estate in Kenya. We have so many opportunities in real estate. And in Kenya, uh, we have plenty of land in Kenya and uh, housing is part of the uh, Agenda 4 in Kenya. So there is the issue of uh, affordable housing in Kenya, which investors can as well come to Kenya and invest in uh, building hotels, uh, accommodation like cottages, uh, uh, private apartments, and we have huge land in Kenya. So basically in Kenya, the business opportunity is wide in agriculture and real estate. That's the much I can say for now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, our Honorable had mentioned the issue of uh, Agenda 4, that uh, uh, building affordable houses is one of the agendas for the government. Uh, probably, maybe you can tell us more about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, real estate is, uh, is something that has been uh, quite lucrative in the, the country. And of course, because of Kenya's attraction to the outside world, we have had so many visitors in the country and when they come of course they would need uh, accommodation so that goes hand in hand with the tourism industry that is in, in Kenya and of course at some point people used to think when you're talking about tourism you're talking about the cost but now uh, Naivasha is also taking over and uh, other parts of the country I've also seen with the advent, advent of counties I've also seen things are happening in Mandera things are happening in Kitui uh, and uh, you find that all that brings forth uh, business opportunities. And of course, not forgetting the coming of the county. The counties have given out structures that are all uh, pro-investments. Now that uh, initially all investment was being cultural government. These days the counties are independent and uh, individuals can be able to go and invest in uh, the counties. I will not leave this desk without talking about uh, sports. Sports is also an investment in the country and uh, there's the traditional sports and of course the, there's the, 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 the other uh, sporting activities that are coming up, that are hitting the world. Kenya is known for athletics and uh, investing in such also can be able to bring benefits to the investor in terms of coming up with camps and coming up with uh, um, equipment that is reliant to, to sports, but there's also beach sports, yeah. Uh, there's so much that the ocean is bringing in terms of uh, the much talked about blue economy, but I'm going to talk about it later. I'm talking about sports, beach football, beach volleyball, beach rugby, it's called touch rugby and all those. Those ones are also opportunities that somebody can come into investing and uh, rip big then going to the ocean that is uh, bias at the coasts and of course the water areas because when blue economy came initially people people were linking it with the coast but then it talks about uh, all the waters that are available in the country and the opportunities that the waters uh, bring in the country you find uh, at the coast you'll find um, uh, blue economy is linked to whatever is available in the waters. And it has never been exhaustive. It's so much. So it just calls for an investor to come and see uh, what the sea holds. Let they be able to create a niche 
of course out of the beaches uh, there's there are also weeds that uh, grow in the ocean seaweeds which is so much in the coastal area and uh, it can be actually under agribusiness but now linked to the ocean and that can be an investment uh, opportunity that somebody can be able to come and invest in and the good thing is that the infrastructure is ready in that particular area we have already people who are doing the weed seaweed farming but at a low level because they don't have the machines and uh, uh, the prerequisite equipment for them to do it uh, in a big way but when an investor comes we expect that they're going to expand that and be able to um, build our towns are also very much established so somebody in the real estate would just pick a town and go and uh, establish their uh, housing business there and you are sure that they, they, there's going to be customers that are going to be there. These days, uh, I talked about manufacturing. At least every other county is thinking about manufacturing. So you will find that most of the counties do, ha do have infrastructure that is ready for people to come and put their machines and continue with uh, the investment that they intend to, to do. So me, uh, I have a feeling that Kenya is ready for investment. And uh, as we move to uh, the Ghana Expo, uh, we are moving with all this information about the country that would be able to attract investors. And therefore, Kenya would be chosen as uh, one of them. She talked about uh, being in the Agricultural Society of Kenya. And the uh, Agricultural Society of Kenya is known for hosting trade fairs and exhibitions every year save for the covid for the last two years but then it's known for that and uh, in these trade fairs you go there and uh, get to interact with government entities private entities non-governmental uh, organizations all of them doing business and this one could also be one of the attractions that can be used by investors to come and see what is availed and of course government agencies are also there the KRA, which will we would of course um, say the tax requirement for one to come and invest. Uh, National Treasury comes there also to talk about uh, the requirements of one to come in in terms of investments and uh, what fiscal measures and then fiscal measures that would be extended to somebody who comes to set up an industry in the country. Because industrialization is also one of the things that we need to, to promote for us to be able to have a stable country. Well, apart from the coasts and the northeastern you mentioned, what other parts of Kenya can we say that uh, the investor can come to? Maybe some parts of Kenya that are not very well invested and they need like to be boosted in terms of investment. Actually, uh, uh, when I was mentioning about the, Ke the Kenyan coast and northeastern, I did not say that they are not very well invested or there are other places that are well invested. But I was trying to say that they are unique... Um, resources that are found in these areas that are not found in the other places. But of course, uh, Kenya is divided into eight regions. I know for seven counties, but eight regions, the traditional ones, which used to be provinces. And each and every province is endowed with uh, uh, different resources, which investors can actually uh, do some a lot of investment. When you go to the Nyanza region, uh, there are so many opportunities that are found in, in that particular area. Okay, of course, farming can be one of them that is going to be found there. Uh, there is a lot of fish that is also found there that can be uh, invested on also. Uh, fish processing plants, the, the, the people can be able to invest when we move to that other side of Western. There is a lot of farming on maize. Yeah? Uh, maybe if we use maize in Kenya, people will understand. When we use corn in other countries, people will understand. Uh, that one is, is, is known for, for that. And that processing also can also be of very high value to the people there. When you go to areas of central, yeah, central is those things we've talked about, uh, uh, the flowers, the coffee, the tea from these particular areas. When you go to Rift Valley, uh, Rift Valley is also known for the, the tea, uh, the coffee, and of course others. But I also insisted that with the advent of the counties, the counties are independent governments. 
and they would be harness each and every resource that you found in that particular country. So you'll find now each and every county is doing almost the same things the other counties would be doing. There would be some uniqueness because of the, the unique nature of the resources that are found inside there. But then ultimately you find most of the things are common in most of the counties. I was talking about a bit. And you see when I'm talking about a bit, somebody takes their mind to the coast. But then Kitui did a beach the other day, and they have a beach now, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> somebody would go and look at that as an opportunity and invest. It's out of a dam, a very big dam, but then it's, it's, it's a beach. So, somebody from Eastern doesn't have to travel all the way to come to coast to see a beach. There's a beach there. So, that is what I meant, that with the advent of the counties, you find resources have been harnessed. And every other county now is talking about uh, very many resources that can actually be available. But generally, the country Kenya is endowed with uh, very many resources that somebody can be investing, both hard and soft. Yeah. Thank you very much, our viewers. You've heard that Kenya is ready. Uh, maybe our, our ambassador can also tell us if are we ready to go to the Panama or are we ready to go to Ghana? Because we have two journeys that we need to prepare ourselves with. Let us start with the Ghana. Can you tell us maybe as our ambassador, are we ready? Sure, we are, we are very much ready. Actually, we have a committee in place that uh, is organizing for the, it's, it's, it's a planning committee that is ready. We are ready on course. We are planning for the Ghana. So the committee sits uh, once in uh, two weeks to meet and deliberate on how we can uh, tap the investors who will be interested in the trip to Ghana. So we are very much ready and uh, Ghana, we shall be there. The date I think Anna has already mentioned, it's going to be on the 27th to 31st of October 2021. So we are very much ready with the delegation. So many people have already shown interest. So Ghana, we are coming, for sure. Thank you. You've heard from our very own ambassador. And uh, this question goes to you, Honorable. Uh, do you think that um, as we are going to Ghana, do you think as Kenyan delegates, are we supposed to prepare ourselves uh, in terms of being ready to bring the investor back to Kenya? Or are we just going to see what is there and then maybe come back and organize our own See, the, the, the good thing with the country, Kenya, is that uh, investment opportunities in the country are documented. So when we go there, we, we are going to meet an investor that we are going to tell them everything that is about Kenya and we are very sure that we are likely to attract them to come to Kenya. Having our own investment uh, conference or rather an exhibition is not a bad idea because it is also a live way of showing investors what different people are doing. But then, we do know that investment opportunities in the country are well documented. Uh, you walk into Kenya Investment Authority today and you get all the information about the country, and including the waivers, including everything else that uh, somebody needs to know when they want to invest in Kenya. And getting those documents sometimes can be kind of some coming to Kenya, but even the, if they go to the internet and try to ask Google, what do you need to invest in Kenya? They will be able to be told. Everything else is available, and whatever I have said that Kenya is ready for investment is also available online. So they can be able to watch. And as we meet in Ghana, we shall just be confirming the fact that we are ready for investment and the investment areas and when they will be ready to come to invest. Otherwise, we are welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Viewers, as we've heard, that we are ready for the investment. We are ready for Ghana. All roads are leading to Ghana as we are talking. All idols are prepared to go to Ghana. And we are hoping that we'll get uh, plenty of fun in Ghana. We'll get to know more about Ghana because that is a very cultural, it's rich in culture. We are going to meet the kings and queens and we are prepared and we hope to be having a very nice time. And as you've heard, we have a lot in Kenya, a lot to talk about in Kenya. We also have the film industry, which is very lucrative. Film industry is the next big thing. 
Uh, probably uh, our honorable being also in charge of talent management can also be able to tell us a bit about the film industry and how Kenya can be tapped in terms of investing on the film industry. Thank you very much. I think uh, the film industry, as you put it, is very big in the country and uh, most of our youth are actually engraved in the industry and it's doing so big. When I was talking about investment opportunities, there was a time I was shifting between uh, hard and soft. And when I talked about soft, there was so much about what is happening online, internet and stuff like that. But also this what happens with the, the industry. The film industry, of course, um, uh, Kenyans are talented also in singing and it's a very big industry, video production and all that. That is something that uh, people can also come to invest. What I know is that the knowledge is here. What is missing mostly is the equipment for, for, for the youth. The resources, natural places to go and film and stuff like that is available in the country. What most youth are missing is, uh, I would say, the outlets. After doing their films, where do they go to? Yeah. So they can come invest in TV stations where local bed uh, content is just shown. They can also come invest in um, uh, helping the youth get linkage with what is happening in other uh, countries. When you talk about uh, Ghana, we are talking about West Africa, where the industry is very much developed there. So they can be able to bring that into the country and get uh, our youth and, uh, of course, the community benefiting out of uh, whatever they are doing up there. So it's something that they can actually come and also invest in. And do some co-production, knowledge transfer, and all those. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I think before we, we go on, maybe there's something that our country ambassador would like to add on to that, or we have a parting shot. Yeah, my parting shot would be, uh, really appreciate if we get more investors from Kenya, uh, so that they can join us in the trip to Ghana, as the dates uh, had mentioned earlier. Uh, my, um, the government uh, will be will really appreciate if we go and uh, we take a big group to Ghana from Kenya, because I believe Kenya we have so many businessmen who would be interested to go and meet the investors from Ghana and from Panama. And the next, uh, I think we'll talk about Panama in the next uh, episode because right now the trip that is uh, about to, to, to come is uh, Ghana. So for now, we wouldn't talk much about the Panama. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Honorable Ramadan, probably maybe you have a parting shot for us. Yeah, I want to say that uh, investment is never an event, it's a process. But then uh, uh, the country is well rated as far as ease of doing business is concerned and uh, that should in itself be an attraction to anyone who wishes to come and invest in the country. So we are welcoming, apart from us going to Ghana for the, the exhibitions, but we are also welcoming people to come and uh, uh, see the investment opportunities that are in the country and assuring them that it should be very easy for them to set up shop uh, in the country for them to do business and also uh, invest in whatever they have chosen or whatever they are well endowed as far as uh, their areas of investment is concerned. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for our guests tonight. And as you've heard, Kenya is ready to trade, to do business with the rest of the world. So going back to Ghana, I think we are all prepared, as you've heard, we are ready with our delegation to go to Ghana. Ghana is a country that is vast with mining. We have a lot of cocoa, gold, and we, we want to see more about the kings and queens, the famous kings and queens of Ghana. We are, we are also uh, very interested in coming to enjoy ourselves. As we've heard, Accra is a city that never sleeps. So I am ready to come. Actually, I don't want to sleep. The next uh, maybe three or four days, I think I'll be awake day and night because there's a lot about Ghana. It's very rich in terms of culture, entertainment, and there's a lot to be offered. Thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoyed the show. Be blessed. Bye-bye.
bumakina amena nara 